I'm Ken Chun. I'm the other half of Lucy. You are all here to do or to learn the 10 form for uh, Yang Tai Chi. It is our introductory course for individuals who have never had Tai Chi, but there are others who have had Tai Chi or are people who've come back to this class for reasons of scheduling as well as for reasons of wanting to learn uh, a, bit, a bit more in depth of uh, the things we're teaching. I'd like to first welcome the people who have never done Tai Chi. I think coming here is a very important action that you have taken. You've come from the sidelines of looking and thinking and saying, wow, I wonder if I should do this. Or what does it take? Well, but today is the day. You come from sitting and thinking to being up and action, trying to actually pursue what you've always thought. And I think that's a very important step. And hopefully, I can do justice to your efforts here. For those that are coming back, again, I welcome them. Obviously, it makes me feel good because it sort of makes me think we must be doing something that's worthwhile and or you are getting something worthwhile from what we do. We've found that, that this particular exercise, this particular art, has been very useful to us in terms of improving our health, improving our state of mind, helping us learn to cope with some of the everyday things is something which addresses the body and the mind. By nature, it starts to be slow. It starts to, it's, and, and moves seemingly in a very different way from what most of us come with. And yet, therein is some of the magic that it possesses. And so, in this world, most of how successful, successful you are is do you get results and do you get results fast enough? Tai Chi does not work that way. Tai Chi works with you get the results and in the meantime, you are learning about yourself as to what results are capable, you're capable of. It also, everybody here comes with a different expectation. Going through learning how to think and to act in the Tai Chi way, hopefully we'll see if that's what you want to do. I have two pieces of advice to the people who, who are starting. Number one, be patient with yourselves in learning how to do something which is totally new in many ways in body and mind. Be patient to your teachers who are trying to teach you that because sometimes you're wondering, what are these guys trying to ask of me? But we feel that we have a method that works and we feel Tai Chi is good. The uh, second thing sort of ties into that. People come with different expectations. And I think some people make up their minds pre prematurely as to whether they will participate or not. Some of them will just, after one or two uh, lessons, or maybe halfway through, somehow they get taken off to doing something else and Tai Chi is not for them. And surely, there are some people who have that, uh, the expectations which cannot be uh, satisfied because of they want it faster than it can be delivered. But in a realistic manner, you should try to complete the 10-week course that we have for this class before you make a decision, okay? It takes about two or three months, three months before people can really assess, has something really happened in my body and mind? Throughout this course, I will be talking about the virtues of Tai Chi, but I think to help you get a, a good view, Lucille has, that's Lucille there, has put online a relatively good uh, uh, summary article out of Mayo Clinic discussing some of the, the virtues of Tai Chi. And I would 
uh, ask you to go to her website, take the time to read it. Uh, read it more than once if you have to, or read it over and over again to see, am I really getting what they're saying? Okay? So that being dispensed, I'd like to then go on to the, uh, the lesson itself. And the first thing I want to teach is the martial arts salute, which we've adopted as a means of uh, beginning our classes, our class sessions, and ending them uh, as a gesture of, of uh, mutual respect and to pay due respect to why we're here. And with that, I'll just show you what it is. You stand relaxed, arms to the side. You bring your arms in an arc, slowly in a circle. Clinch the right fist, put the, the left fist, fist open, and then down. And from there, we would start our lessons. What I'd like to teach now is the thing we will literally do every time we meet warm-up exercises. Over the years, I've watched people do our warm-up exercises, and we have almost as many ways to do it as there are students. So I, I want to try to, to, to make this a little more consistent among the, the individuals, because some of the things we do are the basis for Tai Chi movement. Some of them are actually the Tai Chi movements we will be doing. The warm-up, it's something which in Tai Chi you are doing exercises which are to try to stretch and make your joints flexible, try to move so you move in a coordinated manner, and you try to build up the muscles that you're going to be using for in Tai Chi. And we want to do it relatively slowly. We don't need to get cardio. Cardio is not the aim. The aim is to make the trunk structures move better and more efficiently. There's not that much of an emphasis on moving your hands and your feet, but rather trying to move the, or incorporate the muscles of your legs, your hips, your waist, your back, your shoulders. So with that, I'd like to start. The first one we do is a thing which is quite simple. Turn your neck. Put your hands to your waist. And when you turn, you turn to one side. Just dip your head a little bit. Come back up. Go to the other side. Come back down. Come back up. So we'll do 10 of these. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. The next is turning your shoulders. Put your arms up, sort of like so. And what you want to do is roll your shoulders forward. Lift them up. And slowly do that so that you get the shoulders to go. So we're going forward. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Roll your shoulders. Not this way, but rolling. Rolling. Yeah, okay, good. The other way. Roll back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move your shoulders, nine, ten. Otherwise, it becomes just move your shoulders. That's what you're trying to do, okay? Expand your chest. It's, the hands come this way, open. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We call this waist exercise, but the hands go straight up. The knees bend a little bit, and when you turn, the aim is to turn enough so that you can see the heel on the opposite side. So if I, I'm up here, I'm turning, 
So the knees, if they're rigid, it's rather difficult to do that. But if your knees are bent, you can turn and you can look and you see the other side, okay? And then after you, you've, you've done that, you turn around and you look and you turn and do the other side, straight up. Bend your knees. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. And we call this airplane, but it's not really like an airplane. It's the hands are curved and loose. They come up, one, one in the back, one in the front. Okay, so that constitutes one. There we go. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the next is touch toes, and obviously we try to touch our toes. That's a when you do this. Hands come up here, come down. At the waist, you can, if you like, press over the front of your legs to massage what muscles are there. On the back draw, massage the side muscles. Come back up and go. If you can touch your toes, fine. If you can't, just work toward it. Here we go. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. So we have waist turning exercises. Your, your legs are apart, and you want to do movements that does this. You don't want to be doing wobbling at your knees. Some people think they're doing it, and this is the hips are remaining rigid, but they're wobbling their knees, and they're, they're sort of going in this manner. You want to be able to do this. Up, forward, back, around. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure your knees are not rigid because otherwise you will end up doing one of these things, wobbling at your knees. We go the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We call this kick your foot. This requires a Tai Chi orientation, which means shifting of the weight. There's this, the center of balance in Tai Chi is referred to as a Dan Tin. It is a position which is not an anatomical position. You can't cut somebody open and say, there's your dantin. It is the center of gravity which you have to establish for yourself. And uh, somewhere I read, the way you locate your Tai Chi is experiential. You have to go through working with your body to find that. But the general location is two inches below your navel and about two to three inches inside. So it's almost like the, just at the top of your pelvis. And that is where you center your, 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 your body. Wherever your body goes, 
this is oriented in a centered manner, spinning, going forward or back. You don't want this hanging over the side or leaning too far back. So you, are, you have your dantin. And the dantin is a way to make sure your, your body is being centered. And in Tai Chi, you shift your weight. You shift to one side or the other, forward or back. In this case, we're going to be shifting and most of the weight will be on this leg, it just happens, because we're going to lift this foot and we're going to try to kick it, okay? Your head should not be leaning forward, but be sitting in an upright position. And I will address that later. It is part of what we call Tai Chi posture. You don't want to have it so you're hanging over and you're trying to get up on one foot. It doesn't work. You're shifting here. You bring things here. Your leg is now approximating the midline and you, your head is up and then you put your foot out and you start kicking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, okay? We do the same thing the other side. Shift weight, center, bring the foot toward the midline, head up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay? The next thing is turn your knees. Now is your time to turn your knees. Get down, legs apart, and turn it slowly. You don't have to wobble it you know, really rapidly, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the last, uh, we call it the Heisman, but it's not anywhere close to what the Heisman tro Trophy does, but my kids gave it that name. But the feet are parallel, not out. The feet are parallel. So whether you want to make it parallel this way parallel this way, parallel straight. Because ultimately what you're going to want to do is to shift onto one foot. And if your foot out this way, it's very difficult to shift and, and, and be in balance. So if you're this way, you could say, well, I shift and I have parallel. If you want to do it this way, you want to shift, your feet are parallel, okay? But, and the coordinated movement is the hands come up this way to the center, and then you're gonna go in this direction or in this direction, depending on which leg you are going to do your one-legged knee bend. And you sit in the, your body, Tai Chi posture, the body is straight up, Dantin is going straight down, head is up, not a liability doing this. So you, you come you, 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 from here, shift to one side, hands up to the chest, cross, come out and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come up, and then you go back the other way. Up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back up. Cross. Knee bend on the side you're going down on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so now I'm going to address the Dantin, which I did already, but add a little bit more and talk about Tai Chi posture. The Dantin, the main Dantin is in your pelvic area. Secondary Dantin is deep to the center of the chest. The third is right in the middle of your head, straight down, okay? And the alignment of that should be that these other focal points align to the main Dantin. So, you're focused here, the back gets straight, the head is sit on the shoulders in a neutral position, not, uh, not a liability hanging over this way. Your 
and you're not doing this. You're just literally sitting in this position. In the Tai Chi posture, the equivalent will be the back is straight, the butt is tucked in, so your backbone literally sits on your pelvis that's been tilted forward. The knees are bent, the shoulders are drooped down so that the elbows are not flared out, they're, they're down this way, but not tucked to the body, but loose and even so that you could conceivably put an egg in your armpit and it's not going to fall out and you're not going to crush it. That's there. The head is in neutral position. It just rests on your shoulders, okay? Your chin is not up this way, but tucked. And your tongue is on your palate, just loose on your palate. And that's, and, and, and the legs don't necessarily have to be down here that much. It could be, say, up, but flexed, not, not like this, but even, easy. So you have a sense of relaxation. When you first start, it it's, feels somewhat awkward, but after a while it grows on you, you can just sort of just, oh well, Tai Chi posture, you're right there. And you get to know it, okay? Now I'm, I'm going to teach you uh, two other maneuvers which, which are part of the 10 movements, but it's not in sequence. But we use that in warming up, and we teach that because it allows for strengthening. Those, these two movements require strength and coordination. The first is what we call the golden cockerel. Now let, me, let me demonstrate so you know what, what I'm talking about. What happens is you're out, the feet are widened. The golden cockerel means you shift to one side. I, I'm, in this case, I'm going to do the golden cockerel on the right. You shift to the left foot. The dantian is arranged. Tai Chi posture is there. And you're coming back. You're coming up. Your, your hand is... You're, you're here, your hand is going to, one is going to be coming down and the other hand with the foot is coming up. Comes down, hand comes down, comes to here. You're going to go back up. This hand comes down as this hand comes up. Center your leg, come up. Come down, this hand is here. What you're doing, Tai Chi is, is, is a set of isometric movements. As this is coming up, this is going down. And it's sometimes alluded to by Tai Chi masters as the yin, as examples of the yin and the yang. Opposites make the whole. This is going up, this is going down, and where is my center of gravity? Exactly. You, if you're doing this, you might be off one way or somebody's dragging you down. But if you're coming up this way, this is up in the middle. You don't necessarily stay up there all day, but you're pretty comfortable because you are set. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and do, do the golden cockle. Okay. From here, we shift weight. Shift weight to the left. Center and bring this hand down and this hand up and the leg comes up, right up in the middle, not up here, up here. Because the, the use of this is somebody's bothering you, you block him or you strike him and you strike him again, okay? But you do that with balance. Here we go. This hand's coming across, coming down, this is coming up. You look at him straight in the eye, come back down, shift, center, up, come down, Shift, center, up, come down, shift, center, up, and down. Shift, center, up, and down. So that's going to be another one of our warm-up exercises. And another one is the kick-out. This, this is going to be about number four along the line in the 10 form. Or maybe maybe beyond four. But it is again shifting to one side, bringing yourself centering here. Your hands are now centered here rather than 
doing this, you now bring both together. Okay? And while you're doing that, and you're bringing this leg in, you're centering, and then you, the momentum of this hand going up, this hand going up, helps to bring your leg up, and then you kick out. The hand, or the foot that is going forward, has the hand that is going forward. So right hand is out in front of, of the left hand when you're going to be kicking with your right up, up to help yourself get up, and then out. Okay, this hand is to, I guess from a martial arts standpoint, you could deliver a blow, or you could block or whatever. This hand is the hand of balance. So here, up, balance, here. So again, um, opposites help. This is out here to help because this is sticking out. Otherwise, your body's going to want to do this. But if you up here, up here, you can do that. And this helps you also because you're, okay? So let's go ahead and try that. Here we go. Cross arms, right in front of left, up and out. Come down, come back this way, shift to the left. Left hand in front of right, up and out. Come down. Cross hands, right in front of left, up and out. Down, cross, center, up and out. Down, cross, center, up and out. Okay, got to get the hands out. Be, uh, be expansive. If you're in here, you have no, just think, if, if you ever see people walk on a tightrope, they almost never walk like so. They got a pole, so they can figure out, oh, I'm going a little bit too much this way, a little bit too much this way, before they're already off to one side. It's a, it's a, a, a means of balancing. Same thing here, counterbalance, counterbalance here, counterbalance here. So, because what's happening when this is out this way and this is out this way this stays home and you're steady okay um, okay I think what I'm going to do now that, that's the warm up okay and I'm going to do my rendition of what I'm going to hopefully want to teach you folks over the next 10 weeks the 10 form the 10 form is a derivation of the 24 form, as the 24 form is the derivation of other yang type tai chi. The 24 has been a standard since the mid 50s when the Chinese government says we want exercise for the common people and make it easy enough so they could do it. So a group of tai chi masters got together and they developed what is now known as the universal 24 form. And it is, it is the most common form of Tai Chi, which is done not only in China, but throughout the world. The ultimate goal of our whole curriculum is to eventually get people proficient in the 24. But we took the 10, which was developed in about 2000, because it was something where the government even said, make something a little simpler so people can grasp it and learn it in a reasonable length of time so that they have a sense of accomplishment. Whereas the 10, conceivably, some of you can know the sequence by, by the end of this course, okay?
that's that's what I would want you to be able to do. At least the goal is in 10 weeks, you know the sequence. If you continue, then you start to refine. You refine until you get to the point where you are satisfied. And some people are satisfied quick, quicker than others. Some are never satisfied. But some become very good at it. And then it becomes the time to move on to some of our other classes where we go on to the 24 and we go on to the 16. I'll do it facing you so you understand. We're now in Tai Chi posture. Your feet are either close together or pretty close together. Standing up straight, but knees are slightly relaxed. Buttocks is tucked in, back is straight. Shoulders are allowed to droop forward. Elbows are loosely down on the side. Chest is sunken in a little bit. Head is on uh, the shoulders. Head is tucked in, or the chin is tucked in, and the tongue is at the palate. From there, what happens is you slowly shift your weight to the right side so that it becomes, the weight is all on one side. In Tai Chi, it is referred to the substantial foot so that the other side has little to no weight, which is termed the insubstantial foot. And the cardinal rule in Tai Chi is you do not move the substantial and you can move the insubstantial. So we are shifting to become substantial on the right leg or foot. Then the left foot is free to come up on its toe and then up in the air and then slowly come out, down on the toe, come down on the sole, on the heel. As you do that, you shift your hands from the side. Your hands originally should be down like almost at the seam of your, 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 your clothing. The middle finger is the seam of your clothing. Once you're this way, you turn your hands forward and you're ready to go. From here, what you will be doing is concentrating on fingers and the front of the palms of the hand. You will be pushing and lifting forward. So when you do this pushing and lifting forward and you concentrate on this, it's almost like your hands are levitating. You're pushing it up, but it almost feels like you're levitating your hands. Comes up to the chest, comes down, comes back. The, the elbows come back and down. The shoulders come back and down. And you, you do what we term making yourself small. Come down. And as you come down, the legs, the knees bend. And this, that bending of the knee, sets the level at which you will be doing your Tai Chi. When you first start, the knees and legs are not that strong. You may just be just about like so, and your legs are up. That's OK. Over time, though, what you want to be able to do is forward, up, down. And from here, throughout, the, the routine, you will be approximately at that level. You won't be bobbing up and down. You will be down at this level. So choose wisely. So here we go. Try again. Tai Chi posture. Shift your weight to the right. Lift your foot gently on the left. Up, out, gently put it down, come down. Hands from the front, or from the side to the front, forward. Come up, or th think about taking a deep breath in and focusing on your hands. Push out. Get up to your shoulders. Drop your elbows, drop your shoulders, come down, bend your knees. Okay. You feel comfortable? Here we go again. Shift weight. Lift your foot, toes, up, out, down. Flat-footed, hands forward. Come up, see. You come from this position originally, and you come here. Then you set. Up, push your hands 
come down. Drop your shoulders, drop your elbows, come down to about your waist, your knees are down, okay? That seems simple enough, right? So now we'll go, we'll go on to the second maneuver, which is nicknamed repulsing the monkey. And what it is, is, and I'll start from the beginning. Commencing form, shift weight up on your toes, down on your toes, hands forward. Take a slow, deep breath in. As you come down, make yourself small, drop your shoulders, drop your elbows. From here, repulsing the monkey comes turning your waist slightly to the right, bringing, spreading your arms out, spreading your arms out, spreading your arms, spreading the arm. One, one stays forward and the other comes back, comes about 135 degrees. And once you get there, both hands open up as if you're open, opening a blossom. Then you bring it to your ear, turn your waist gently and come toward the midline and then meet the two hands here and one is pulled down and the other is pushed forward. And when you get that way, then you put the left hand out this way. It's already open. When it gets to this position, then this hand opens. It stays in the midline. Hand comes up to the ear. Turn your waist gently. Come back toward the midline. Push and pull. Turn, watch this hand go up. 135 degrees up to the ear, or I'm sorry, here. And as it gets here, this hand opens up. And then you're coming. Again, it's down here. Come up, hands open, hands open, hands open, palms open, palms open. Come up, back down. The purpose of this maneuver is you are pulling your opponent, but you're also giving him a shove. And the, it's, it's not so much a swimming motion, but it's here, turning, and using your truncal muscles. And that's, that's, over and over we'll be talking about using your core muscles, and that's what Tai Chi is about. The hands are the extensions of your body. And when you move your body, you're moving your hands. If I'm here and if I put my hand here and I just did this, I move my body, I'm moving my hands, you see? So it's not just, it is up here, turn. You move your hands a little bit, but part of the power is coming from here and from back here. Similarly, when, you, when you're lifting, you're not trying to lift up this way, you're trying to do this. When you're commencing form, you're, you're, you're concentrating here, but you're pushing forward. And when you do that, you get the feeling as if, because you're concentrating here, it's like the power is not coming from here, but it's like your, your fingers are floating, but it in fact is coming from here, and the, the, uh, this sensation of finger floating I don't know where it comes from, but it does. It feels like the hands feel very, very light. Okay, so let's go. I've got to face this way now. Here we go. Tai Chi posture, commencing form. Weight to the right, lift the left, put the left out, down, flat, even weighted, turn the hands forward, Lift your hands, so push your hands forward, up, come down, bend your knees, let your hands come down. Both hands spread apart, hands open, palms up, right to the ear, turn to the midline, push and pull.
turn left up hands open to the ear turn forward let's keep going with this as a drill okay come out open hands ear turn push and pull turn up hand to the ear turn push and pull turn hand up to the ear hands open hand to the ear turn push and pull coming this way hand is to the side hands open up hand to the ear turn push and pull how's that okay I'll watch you while I'll do it okay here we go again Tai Chi posture hands to the side right to the side like you're touching the seams of your pants with your middle finger okay oh also I forgot breathing in Tai Chi is diaphragmatic breathing it's not it's the belly comes out the diaphragm comes down and you take the opportunity when you shift weight lift your foot your insubstantial foot up and out down turn the hands forward now as you lift your hand take a slow deep diaphrag diaphragmatic breath in up come down sink your shoulders and your elbows bring it your hands down and your knees shift your hands front and back spread them out flat uh, palms down as you get to the back palms are up come to the ear turn to the midline meet push and pull out to the side right hand opens up left to the ear turn push and pull so here we go again let's start from the beginning commencing form up and out and down hands to the front up slow deep breath in come down bend your knees okay repulsing of the monkey one hands open to the ear turn push and pull Um, yeah. follow your hand follow the pushing hand here comes and it follows that's another part of, of, of doing Tai Chi you are focusing on a part of your body 90 degrees 135 that's all you need to do so you don't have to be looking that way but you follow you come out this way you follow this hand out comes up to the ear from the ear turns to the object from here and as you get to about here then you start changing your focus and you start looking at this hand follow that hand in I put a lot on you but we're going to repeat that again because this is the first time but we'll close with our, our martial arts salute